Love Line, Coast to Coast. Hey, everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Tonight, the guest is the love that is found between the two hosts. <laughs> huh. I like couldn't quite get that out. Yeah, it's funny. Drew gave a look at the uh, schedule, then he looked back at me, then he looked down at his microphone, and he looked back up at me. <laughs> huh. That's right. Uh, brevity is the soul of wit, Drew. That's right. Uh, I was actually bewildered. Steven? Huh? <laughs> Steven, you're uh, 18 years old. What's up? Hey, how you guys doing? Good. All right. Um, big problem. Uh, my girlfriend, I, well, my ex-girlfriend, she's been on the pill for about two months now. Um, and right now she's complaining that she's getting sick in the morning because I still do talk to her. And uh, she thinks she might be pregnant. And but we, she was on the pill, and I also was pulling out while we were having sex. All right. So either she's getting sick from the pill, which people do commonly, after all, two months, though. Yeah, sometimes if they, if they don't really understand that they need to make some changes, it could have been that way the whole time. And the pill is basically your body believing it's pregnant. That's ha, what the pill ha, is. Has she been taking the pill properly? That's the other thing. Um, I don't. I, she told me that she's never missed a day, but she's maybe taken it maybe one hour off of the time she was supposed Well, that shouldn't change anything. Has she taken any other medication on top of it? Um, not recently. She recently did have, like, a throat infection that I gave her, but that was about it. Is she trying to lure you back into her web of deceit? Um, not... Well, I know she does want me back, but I, I already made it clear that I don't want to get back with her. Yeah, but the question was, is this a ploy for her to try to get you back? Um, I don't think it is. Um, maybe she... She was kind of asking me about that. Oh, if I do have the kid, would you get back? With right, me? magically. And maybe she didn't take the pill so properly during some uh, of your encounters. Did she know uh, you were going to break up before you broke up? Um, I recent. Well, I did break up with her one time before, but I got back with her that same day because, well... Um, you wanted to have sex. I, no, no, that's not it. I don't like doing that with the girls. All right. Um, not that I don't like sex. But. All right. Sh should she go get a test or what? Yeah, she go get a test. I, I wondered if we, when he said she, he gave her a sore throat, whether she took some antibiotics for that, and that could screw up the effectiveness of the pill. Mm -hmm. So, sure, it's possible. It's possible she's pregnant. Yeah, and, and listen, guys, who uh, all you guys do that, uh, I'm going to break up with you, but then I'm going to get on the maintenance, the sexual maintenance program. That's fine, but keep in mind, if they want to suck you back in, they may just conveniently forget to take that pill. And then you may be sucked in for life. Could or at be. least they may suck your wallet back in. Does the vagina actually have a vacuum, Drew? Oh, yeah. Oh, it does. Huh? Interesting. Scott? Yeah. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? Well, here's the problem. Uh, me and my wife, we've been married for almost two years, but we've been together for five. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, the sex was great in the beginning and constantly nonstop. You know, blowjobs are there. But, uh, Hold on, let me get my scratch pad. Blowjobs are there. Did he there. say uh, yes, yes to blowjobs? He said they're there. But a check oh, by blowjob. Yeah. All yeah, right. They were there constantly. Mm -hmm. Never had to ask. Mm -hmm. you know? And now they're like gone. Sex has stopped once, maybe twice a month if I'm lucky. You know, we do have a daughter that was born uh, on my birthday just before we, or just after we got married. And I know that, that uh, women's hormones change after childbirth and everything, but. I and mean, that was just like instantly. Oh, so immediately after the pregnancy, she was shut down. Uh, it started a little bit before that, but after the pregnancy, it was it was gone. All right, and that's been two years now. Going on two years, yeah. All right, so he, maybe something biologically is affecting her. Maybe she's depressed. Maybe her hormones haven't sort of normalized since the pregnancy. That's something that warrants evaluation. And maybe there's something going on in the relationship here. Well, not not that I know of. I mean, we're we're happy all around. I mean, we don't we don't. It just seems like Scott would be the last to know. It does. That, that, yeah. That, yeah, Scott. Um, does she ever talk to you about it? Does she feel guilty? Does she feel bad? Well, all she really tells me is she don't want it. <laughs> I, I mean, know, but okay. But here's what I'm saying, Scott. If you're a loving and nurturing partner in this relationship, and for some reason or another she does not want to be intimate with you, then she would say to you. Hey, look, uh, you know, I'm sorry. It, it, there's something going on with me. You're a great guy. I'm sorry I'm putting you through this. Let me see if I can do something about it. But she wouldn't just say, hey, get away. Uh, I don't want any. I don't know. What, what woman have you ever met that does no, the, no, the former? No woman. I just invented her. Yeah, that's a woman that's a man. Okay, no. Here's what I'm saying, Drew. 
No, it, I understand. If what you're Scott saying. is a great guy, yeah. and he's being a great husband and, and, and a great father, and the relationship is just right, on and Taylor. everything's yeah. great. Yeah. But something's going on in her. She'd say, and that. she has to keep saying no to him. Yeah. I think she would say, "I'm sorry." I mean, yeah. I, I, my my sympathy and condolences but go out the, to your penis. The, the irony in all this is is that that never happens because as soon as the guy starts bugging, right now the woman's pissed. Mm-hmm. So there's no more that I'm sorry. It's like, hey, cut it out. And now they're shut completely down. Do you bug her at all, Scott? Uh, in the beginning, yeah. Right. Now it's more I just kind of go with whenever she wants it type of thing. Yeah. But aren't you a little bit angry at her, too? Uh, you know, I, I could say that I was, but I mean... But How can you be mad? You know, I mean. Well, you can feel shunned and hurt, frustrated, rejected, frustrated, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, rageful, angry. Yeah, I'm not angry. I'm oh. just would really like to find out what's going on. Well, okay. why not? Why doesn't she go get evaluated? I, mean, I said there's certainly a real possibility that it could be depression or a biological problem. Well, she did see a doctor, and and they had prescribed uh, Zoloft. Yeah. Well, all right. So, it's so already somebody has suspected a significant mood disturbance here. So that's for real. And those mood disturbances are definitely affected by the hormones. She should see a doctor that specializes in this kind of thing if possible. Sometimes just going on the birth control pill can restore some of the libido. If she is sick enough mood from a mood-wise to need antidepressant medicine, she warrants an expert opinion. It's weird, too. When a woman shuts down and then a guy comes at her a couple of times, they get angry. A couple of times. The first time the guy's pleading, the woman's like uh, completely turned off. Right. Now, yeah. We wouldn't do that. I mean, as a guy, if you shut down and a woman came at you, you'd be... You'd, you'd rally. Well, not or, you'd be, only, or you'd be embarrassed. Well, you'd not say, only would you rally and do something, but let's just say you couldn't. Let's just say you were so yeah. goddamn depressed you couldn't get a boner. You'd be embarrassed, ashamed, you'd, you'd apologize. Like, Honey, this is my friend Stu. He's agreed <laughs> to go down on you for a while. I'm going to buy you uh, a new vibrator. We're going to take care of you. I feel guilty. Uh, yeah, I feel really, yeah. Yeah. As you, opposed to, hey, you're, you're objectifying me. You right. make me feel like you just want sex. <laughs> you right? Yeah. Is that nuts? No, I hate women too. <laughs> Samantha? Yeah. You're 14? Yeah. What's up? I'm not sure if I'm a lesbian. Yeah. Well, at 14, it's good to not be sure of much, okay? Okay. So don't go uh, signing yourself up for any particular party or... Or sexual orientation. Okay. It's all right. Just relax. Why do you think you're a lesbian? Well, I have this... <coughs> she's my best friend. Mm -hmm. And I'm attracted to her. Yeah, you're a lesbian. That's True, also lesbian. common and doesn't mean anything. It means you're attracted to your girlfriend. It may or may not mean you have a, a homosexual orientation. It may okay. mean you just... And it may mean you confuse intimate or, or warm and sexual feelings, which 14 mm -hmm. is when you do that. And, I don't know, it's just, it kind of seems like she... Well, let's stop. It, it also seems like you're depressed. I mean, you sound kind of depressed. I don't know, I, well, my parents are sleeping, so I have to talk quiet. Doesn't it sound that you feel like... Yeah, but what 14-year-old right. calls this show is not depressed? Okay, all right. Are you depressed? No, I don't feel depressed. Okay, do you like guys? Not really. I mean, they're cool to hang out with and stuff, but... Right. But there's the cootie factor. <laughs> well, the idea of a guy shoving his tongue down my throat or, yeah. you know, yeah. not appealing. No more. That Gives me the heebie-jeebies. Yeah. You, you finally, you're finally off that now. Drew, what? would you rather make out... Let me... Hold on. Let uh, me ask Drew a question. Here we go. Hypothetical. Hypothetical. For a million dollars. No. Oh. I, first off, listen. I don't go for that million dollar BS. Yeah, but how many... When you were 14... How many times a day did, did you ask that of your friend? No, no, I I go for it now. I but here's here's my point. People always do that stuff where they go, you know, uh, you let this guy give you a BJ or you tongue kiss, uh, <laughs> y you know, uh, Richard Simmons or you, you know, do this to your dad or that to your mom and guys, a ah, million dollars, no, no, not a million. Then you start going up, five million, no, ten million. Uh, okay, now I'm listening, <laughs> ten million, ten five. Y but the reality is, is most people who are working a crappy job and uh, bringing home twenty eight grand a year after Uncle Sam's done with them, they see uh, you know nineteen of that a year. Right. Uh, you show them an attaché case with fifty, filled with uh, fifty thousand yeah. bucks tax free. Whatever. Hey, hey listen, you want to get somebody killed? You do it for three grand, uh. twenty five hundred, no problem. Uh, I, I could get on this radio right now. 
Wait a minute, I'm on the radio right now? <laughs> I could get someone to kill anybody in my family for three grand. Man, I hope they're listening. It could be that easy. Uh. So my point is, is 50 grand would do it. 10 grand would do it for just about anything. I don't go for this million crap, but Drew, would you rather... Yeah, here we go. Make, I got, I got. make out with a guy passionately uh. with your tongue yeah. for, mm, let's say, five minutes. Like a good long song. Who do we know there was an actor that had to do that recently? I don't know. Yeah, we met someone. All right. Don't change your subject. All right. We'll make out, yeah. We or give the guy like a 30-second BJ. Ooh. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah. It's tough because, you know, a lot you know, of you... You know, here's the deal. A lot of you yeah. girls listening think there's a big difference. But for a guy, I don't know. Making out, like really, you know, yeah. slopping tongues back and forth. Uh, the, 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 five minutes. The, the penis, I might go BJ for 30 seconds. The penis is a real commitment. You know what I'm saying? Either way, you're not marrying the guy. Though. No, I, I but no, I don't mean that kind of commitment. I mean it's a, it's stepping up. You know what I'm saying? Makes you gay. What do you got against the gay. gays, Drew? No, no. Huh? <laughs> Doesn't make you got you, a problem with the gays? It's is as you've said. It's it's you know it's graduating to something that to, you know. Gay guys must love this conversation when straight guys like us are going. How much to just touch your tongue against that other guy's tongue? Five million dollars. <laughs> Five million. No, I think I do the making out part. You do the making yeah. out? Cause I, I, yeah, yeah. Five minutes. That's a long, it's a lot of tongue. Yeah, it wouldn't be fun. A lot of tongue. Yeah. I mean, that's that's eternity, five Jeez. minutes. Whew. Okay. What about uh, 45 seconds worth of hand job? The hand. I mean, as a physician, that's yeah, something. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. I mean, listen, I've, you know, fished... Uh, uh, no, that's super too, balls you know, out of the toilet and grab pull tampons out of the toilet. I, I think I could do a handy for forty five. But, but now you're talking about arousing someone, and that's like, oof. well, you know, that's when you're making weird. out with them, you know, you're going to feel it between uh, the jeans there when you're making out. Oh, you're if, the get person, if the other person, the other, oh, not me. All right. So what? Uh, what do we tell Samantha to do? Who? She doesn't like guys. She kind of likes her friend. She's fourteen. We told her relax. Right. Okay. Don't don't announce it at Christmas dinner. Maybe you're lesbian, maybe you're not. I, I chill think she's pill. Just, eh, That's right. Chill you don't pill. need to know. Not yet. Not for another 36 hours. Sarah? Yeah. Hi. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? Um, I have some real serious questions about some bleeding, vaginal mm. bleeding that's no. going on. Yeah. Yeah? Um, with Depo. I've been on Depo Provera for six years. Mm-hmm. I stopped having my period about four or five months after I started it when I was 16. Uh-huh. And now I have suddenly started bleeding. Okay. We're not talking about spotting either. <laughs> heavy bleeding. Uh, um, well, it's not a heavy period, but it's a period. Have you gained any weight? No. Started any medication? Um, several. Well, there you go. Well, but I've done these medications too. You see, I haven't noticed a significant change in my life. Wait, hold on a second. You've done these medications too? What does that mean? I'm sorry? Yeah, I asked if you started any new medication. You said yes. No, I thought you said, are you on any medication? No, oh, no. New medication. No, nothing new. Any change in doses? Um, no. Okay. About a year ago, I, I started taking Pentassa. Yeah, your bowel problem? Yeah, I've got ulcerative colitis. Oh, well, you know, has that been active lately? No, not in a year. Y you know, that that can sort of all bets are off. you have any of the complications of... of you, have ul you have UC, right? You have ulcerative colitis. Right. right. You have any complications from that? No. What is that, Drew? It's inflammatory bowel disease. The immune system attacks the colon. Oh, sweet yeah. Jesus! Yeah, well, it's not good. It's bloody diarrhea. From, oh, good yes. times. Thanks for sharing, Drew. Yeah, it's a lovely thing. Why yeah. have you been on the shot since sixteen? That seems young to get on that. Uh, well, I was on the pill, mm -hmm. and they I was continually having migraine headaches. Oh, that's they interesting. That it might have been the pill. Yep, it would be. It probably would be. So we switched over to the shot. Any history of thyroid problems? No. Any rheumatoid arthritis or anything like that? Any of the rheumatic diseases? No, not that I know of. Okay. Well, it's, it's, the thing is, it's not just been a week. Um, I'm away from home, and that's why I haven't seen my doctor about this. Oh boy, uh, you're 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 not a you know you're not a simple case. If you have ulcerative colitis, you're on multiple meds. It, it it complicates things, and you you immediately begin worrying that it's something to do with that disease or the medicine, or side effect of the medicine, or diseases associated with ulcerative colitis. Something else that's starting to come up here. Yeah. Or. It's just that you have unstable endometrium, you're bleeding, which is not uncommon, and you need a gynecologist to evaluate What's that. rheumatory mean? Rheumatoid arthritis. What does I know, it mean? But, yeah, the word. 
Mm-hmm. He asked if there's any uh, other rheumatic rheumatory disease. diseases. No, I said rheumatic diseases. Be inflammatory diseases. You know, autoimmune diseases. That's what that means. So uh, rheumatoid arthritis mean inflammatory arthritis? Inflammatory autoimmune attack on the joints. I don't know. Let me, let me get the addiction. Let's see what the, the prefixes no. stand for. I'm thinking about attacking a joint when I get home. I had a pretty long day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, Brada? That's what's my you, main man. What's just getting that, right. that new car of yours and drive right. around Lake Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah, while I'm attacking that joint. Good times. Gavin? Yeah. You're 20? Yeah. 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 What's up? Uh, I had a question about what you said last night. Mm-hmm. What did we say last night? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, one, uh, one topic. It was about... Blah, 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 blah. About what? It was about drugs. Yeah. And oh. How you, uh, you keep an uh, open mind as to, you know what people take and you know that they're an addict you don't say no drugs are bad this is adam was saying this last night yeah um i was wondering in your own personal opinions are there any drugs that you have absolutely no tolerance for no matter what the situation Uh, again i I, you know other than my own children and and people in you know community with my kids i don't think people have a right to tell other people what they should and shouldn't be doing right but I, he's not asking that no i understand but so so but so the point i'm making is i have zero tolerance for all kinds of things in, in yeah. my own little community yeah if for the rest of the world like free thought yeah that too but for the rest of the world if and and i and i think other parents should have zero tolerance for a lot of stuff it, it, the kids are going to do stuff but to have the parents to put down a line of the sand is important you want me to st- you know my dad can uh, start looking uh, running down therapists for your kids now for when they're a little bit older you want, you want them to uh can I just send them to him hit the streets yeah you could do that if right. he's still around All right and uh the drug what the drug that scares me the most uh jeez it's a toss up between ecstasy and lsd uh, and, I, and I probably have to come down on LSD. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going speed. No, speed. Is, people do speed. Listen, unless you're addicted to oh, no, speed. You, you snap right back with speed, but it's an ugly. If you're addicted. Well, if you're addicted, it's ugly. If you're not addicted, then what the hell? Um, it, it, You can get addicted to it fairly easily. If you're an addict. But it, people can abuse it and not get addicted. It's just an, it's an ugly drug. Yeah. It's just, uh, it seems, it's to me, it's the ugliest. It's the teeth grinding, it's the bad B.O., it's the picking, <laughs> picking. Is there such a thing as good B.O., by the way? <laughs> we should stop putting the word bad I, in front I, of I, B.O. Yeah, I, I'm still recovering from the weenie roast where I got a load of all kinds of B.O. <laughs> There's the, uh, you know, picking at yourself. The picker center, the but that's all addiction. Paranoia. It's all addiction, though. I, I, I have done uh, many a drug, and I can tell you that the speed is sort of the weirdest of the drugs. Well, the, the less, the least pleasant. But in terms of the ones that can have consequence on the rest of your life, can change who you are, can change your brain function. All right, but how you know LSD people, ecstasy? People don't get hooked on LSD as much. Yeah, as they, get, they don't get, they get hooked, hooked at all. But speed. they, but a couple of how doses, dare you, then? a couple of doses, no. and they're altered for the rest of their life. Untrue. I, Adam, I've seen it. I've seen You've it. Seen I've seen nothing. Seen I've you, seen s- it. you see what I show you and nothing more. I've seen <laughs> <laughs> No, I've seen you, you've seen a couple of lightweights who uh, spazzed out a Grateful Dead concert and whacked their head on a drinking fountain. No. That's what you've seen. No. Nope. You see what I tell you to see. Hey, I've seen this from ecstasy, too. I've seen people with nah, mood disturbances nah. the rest forever. No, that, that's groovy. Speed, we agree. All right. Thanks, Gavin. Thank you. All right, good times. All right, man. All right. <laughs> Put the man in there. All right, let's talk to uh, Jennifer. Jennifer? Hi. Hey, you're 16. What's up? Hey. Well, first of all, I want to say, Adam, I love you. Yeah. You're the best. Finally. Thank you. He's not. Why? Yes, I'm good. And Why? Maybe the you're best. You're very cool, too. Don't worry. Thank you. We love you, too. Mm. Um, I don't believe it. <laughs> I do. Okay, my question is about my boyfriend. He, um, he's really, like, macho around his friends. Like, he plays football for varsity and everything. But, like, around me, he's really kind of girly. Like, he listens to boy bands. And he never seems to want to do anything. Sexually? Like, yeah. Oh. I know. Have He's you, bisexual. Have you, you, have you, you do. done anything sexually with him? Um, barely, but it wasn't like anything good or anything worth like talking about. Are you a virgin? Yes. But you want, with him, you want to move it along? Yeah. Not How old is he? Not lose my virginity, but... You what? Not necessarily lose my virginity yet. But, but you just want to be closer physically, yeah. yeah. Oof. And he just seems to be really feminine. I'm, I'm not sure if he's gay or not. Has he? Have you asked him? Um, no. Yeah, oh, that kill him. He'd probably get really offended. Yeah, he did not. Well, why don't you ask him just why he's not being more physical? <clears throat> I don't know. How Can old is he? He's seventeen. Hmm. Is he a virgin? Yes. Hmm. 
And, you know, what do you guys do? Do you, do you kiss? Yeah. Does he grab some boob? No. What? Mm-mm. Well, I don't have too much to grab anyway. Feet? Hey, does, it, does he rub around? A little. You sure he's the boyfriend? What? I mean, is he your, is he your boyfriend? Yeah. Does he get he an er- for three months. Does he get an erection when you make out? Um, he has. He has. Whose yeah. erection? His. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Noted. Well, we got to get him on the horn and get to the bottom of this. Oh yes. We got to get to the truth, Jennifer. Okay. Now Drew is here. Drew has some sort of degree. I'm not sure uh, where it came from, but uh, he'll not let this thing go awry. Mm-hmm. Drew's a um, he's board certified. And he can help. So let me be clear. Uh, I do not want any responsibility for whatever goes on here. Thank you. It right. doesn't matter. You do. We need to talk to this guy with you, and we need to get to the bottom of this. Uh, let's we won't right. tell him I what you think he's gay. He's on vacation right now, actually. Where is he? He's in Las Vegas. They don't have phones in Vegas? Well, I don't know where. Like, I know the hotel he's staying, but I don't know what room and stuff. What's that son of a bitch doing in Vegas at 17? Um, he has a baseball thing. Hmm. For like, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Could it be? Uh, uh, let's float a couple of things. Because Drew's a passionate, passionate, passionate man. I've heard. And, and at seventeen, was even more passionate when he had a, a functional penis. <laughs> and he, I know he cannot understand this. I, however, was not as passionate as Drew was when he was seventeen. You had to be sort of. Uh... I, I sort of understand being a little tentative. In being yet horny in the sense that you, you know, go home and jack yourself to oblivion every night. But being kind of a uh, little uh, trepidatious. Oh, phobic, a little social little, phobia. Well, around women, you know, a little little scared to get off the mark. Yeah, but this is a boyfriend of three months. It's, but, like, it's not know, a closing deal. It's like done deal. But he's a, he's a virgin, too. Right? Yeah. All, all the more to get on with it. I Can know. I talk to him? Yeah. Like openly? No, no I, well, I, I think you, listen, I think you ought to keep your fantasies about what's going on with him to yourself, but you ought to open the dialogue about why the relationship hasn't progressed physically. Don't get into the, the gay the, part. Do not get into that part. That has nothing to do with this. Okay, let me, let me, uh, maybe let me know. put it to you this way, and I know you don't understand this again, being a passionate, 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 passionate man. Got to, got to, got to. But, but. Uh, got to, got to, got to, <laughs> got to love the love line. But is a is a guy who's a virgin, especially when you're sort of a macho guy or jock guy. Yeah, or that's the right. You, you, you were team. able to maintain that virginity for quite some time. How dare you? How dare you bring my hymen into this conversation? This okay. intimate, open, honest conversation we're having here on the air. I, it, I feel bad. Is a guy who's a virgin? I feel dirty when you have this macho mystique, especially. And you have all this prowess on the football and baseball yeah, yeah. field. If you're used to achieving, making fun of other guys, that kind of thing. But you're sort of harboring this secret, which is you're kind of a virgin. And I think the guy, now, he could not be interested in women. He could be gay. There could be all those things. But, but I wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Yeah, but you're projecting a little bit too much of yourself into this. How? Did, did, this thing, right. did you have an opportunity like this? Somebody for three months? To get laid? Room, it was sitting in a room with you with the door shut saying, hey, come on, come on, come on let's get on with this. With the door shut. But you know what I'm saying? You weren't... No, I didn't have a lot of opportunities to get laid when I was 17. On the other hand, we all know where there's a will, there's a way. Mm, not at 17. There, there, were, there were guys less attractive than I was that were willing to do whatever. I mean, look, I would, you know, it went, went a different saw issue. a hooker or something. Yeah, that's a different issue. This is his, he's with his girlfriend. He, he and should, she's, yes, and she's he should be moving along faster. Yeah. I'm just saying he may not be gay. No, I, the gay thing doesn't enter into right. me. I'm just, there's something he, there. He what may not, not like her, what have you. He just may be, he may be shy. He may be a little so it, tentative. It's there's something. a reason there's he's a, a virgion at 17. He's the, you know, captain of the football Maybe team. Maybe there's a religious reason. A virgin. Maybe he has profound feelings well, about all this. She would have brought that up. I just say take it slow and give him a chance. But oh, I, I think once you get the balls rolling, game over on this or one. Game it's on. game on. Yeah. Okay. We'll be back. Hey, 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 hey! It's Love Line, kitties. Before we get back to the show, I want to give a shout out to Big Dan, the man, Kellison, and uh, Jimmy, my partner and life partner, Kimmel out there, and Bad Brad. I can't remember his last goddamn name, but uh, they're partying. They're from the man show, and they just called up. I'm going to give them a little shout-out. I'm going to dedicate the next call to them. All right, Drewski? Yes. What do you say there, buddy boy? Wait, wait, no, did we get the guy on the line? Were we trying to get the boyfriend? No, I guess we left that behind. He was in Vegas. They didn't want to talk, and yeah. we got to rock. So what do you say? All right, dude. I want to give a shout-out to Adam and Dr. Drew. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> 
is that? I have no idea that is. Let's hop back on the phones and speak to Renee. Renee? Hey, what's up? You're 19. What's going on? Yeah, um, me and my boyfriend, we've been together for like a year and five months. And when we went home for summer vacation about two weeks ago, we were like 300 miles away from yeah. our hometown. His ex-girlfriend said that she was pregnant and she had his kid. Yeah. And so, yeah, it, it sucks. Okay, hold on. How long ago was he with the ex-girlfriend? He was with her for two years before. Ending when? Uh, I kind of broke them up. Ending when? Um, February of mm -hmm. 2000. So a year and a half ago. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. And the child is how old now? See, I don't know. I've heard a bunch of rumors, and I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's his, but he kind of believes it is. And Are we going to do some paternity, paternity testing? Well, what do you know, Renee? Well, um, I don't. all I know is that she has a kid, and she's claiming that it's his. And um, I know, but why don't you think it's his? Because she lies. She's like, she's a liar. I just don't like her. All right, so why aren't we going on and doing some paternity, <laughs> some testing? It's not his. Oh, hold on a second. Let me just finish yeah, Renee's talk. Yeah. It's not his kid because I don't want it to be his no, no, kid. Because I don't like her. Well, and don't want it to be your yeah. kid. You well, shut up. Uh, stop correcting me. God damn you. Go ahead. Okay, but um, like the paternity test costs $500. And I don't know. We, we're college students, so... Like, we don't really have the money to, like, give up like that. Well, what other choice do you have, it really? It needs to be established. I know, but if it's, if I break up with him and then it's not his kid, because he's, like, really, we're, like, a really good, we're really good together, and I don't know. Does he want to break up? I don't want to break up. Does he want to break up? Oh, boy. No, he doesn't want to break up. Why is anybody talking about well, breaking what up? What college there? are you going to? I go to Cal State LA. Nah, that's not a real college. <laughs> well, who's talking about breaking up? Well, I mean, I, I want to be with him, but why is breaking up get why is breaking up getting into this equation at all? Because it's extra baggage. So who wants to break up? I'm, I'm thinking about it, but I don't know because if it's not his kid and I break up with him, then I don't know. Yeah. Hey, Renee. Yeah. Remember about uh, three days ago when we said it was important to get the paternity test. So you could figure out who the father of this child is so that you could move on in your relationship. And you said no because you wanted to break up. But if it's not his kid, you don't want to break up. But then you don't know what you, to do. But then you said you definitely don't want to break up. Except you might break up. Okay, well, I don't want to break up, but it's in the back of my mind that... Because I'm like... I Hold on, I'm Renee. Gonna, I'm going to translate here. Renee, I don't want to be insulting, but you don't have a back in your mind. Your mind's not that deep. <laughs> you, have a, you have a front and a middle. There's no back. <laughs> Okay. To the front garage. Or you have a front and a back and no middle. It's like at the uh, theater when you get the medium and large or the small and medium. All right, here, here's the translation. You're pissed. You're, excuse me, Anderson. You're angry. Yeah. You're angry. And you want it, uh, And you want him to... Pay him back you a want, You want to know. You want him to know it. You're going to make him... You want to make him fearful that you're going to break up. Even though, as you say, you're great together. He doesn't want to break up. You're going to hold that over his head because you're angry. You're damned angry. Is And you know what? Hey... He was with her 18 months ago. They had sex. Maybe a child was the product of that. She broke them up. And you broke them up. I know, but she she Hold lies. She, she, she was lies. with my ex-boyfriend to get with me. Uh -oh. Renee? Yeah. You must be a good-looking girl. Yeah, I am. Yeah, because uh, you're easy on the eyes and tough on the ears. Yeah, okay. I know you're good-looking. <laughs> and, you know, people who see you, they just tune you out and they go, ah, she's good looking, I'll let her get away with murder. But my God, are you are uh, unattractive sounding. Boy, what a pain in the ass. All right, have I brought you down to earth far enough? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. You got to get the paternity test. Um, yeah, I know and that. If you want to stay with him, that's what you and need to the, do. the fact that he, that this, a child came out of that relationship, uh, not his fault. He, he was with her going along, having a relationship till you broke him up. And I, by the way, I like people who do this, which is she breaks them up and she hates her. And blames him that they had sex. Right. Oh, she must be good looking. Do you know what I'm talking about this, Renee? Yeah. Yeah. Renee, I'm telling you, you're 19, you're good looking. You are the uh, queen of Sheba, but uh, it, it ain't going to last. So enjoy. Please, please uh, cherish, er, cherish every moment. Like it's a General Foods International coffee. <laughs> commercial that's how you should treat your life God, do you remember those commercials with the couple that kept the they're falling kept, in love over coffee the guy kept coming over for the coffee <laughs> yeah 
I mean, maybe if they'd, I could see that couple falling in love over some peppermint schnapps or wine coolers or something where someone got loaded and gave it up. But yeah, the attractive, uh, will they get together? Yeah, and it was like it was instant coffee. <laughs> instant coffee should not have the word coffee in it. It should just be <laughs> called instant brown beverage. <laughs> Jeff? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. Oh, did I hate that, Renee? What's up? You're, you're uh, 16, you masturbate six times a day? Yeah, around there. Good times. Do you ever have uh what's your best day? Um I say I got up to about nine or ten. Nice. Oof. Do that's you ever is your skin okay? Uh no, it kinda turns red sometimes. <laughs> no ass. Sure. You have to let the air touch your penis every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. What's the question? Oh, um, my question is like I it's just a problem and I can't stop and I've tried stopping and it just okay. won't stop. Okay, well, let's talk about where that comes from. Are you bipolar? Uh no. Are you an addict? Um, nope. Were you sexually abused growing up? Um, uh, no. Adam, were you sexually abused growing up? Uh, uh, <laughs> Jeff? Yeah? Do you understand what I'm getting at there? Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, I've, I'm just, you know, I'm no, I'm not. You were not? No. Okay. Were you physically abused growing up? Um, no. Okay. All right. Well... Maybe that's just you. There are some people that are that way. It's a little little heavy. Tell you, five leads to six, and six leads to seven. It makes it easier. It's like killing people. Yeah. <laughs> it's always easier after your first one. Yeah. I got one off in my uh, man show dressing room. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that, is that what? Oh, yeah, you know, it's, you know it's Is funny. that because you're around the juggies and stuff? I, that... I don't know. It's, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I, I was hyper-stimulated. <laughs> you know the thing that's funny about me? Oh, my God. Funny slash uh, sad is, I'll be going. Yeah, uh, you know, I go. I roll into work at uh, eleven o'clock this morning. I'm like, uh, <coughs> and beat off in a little while. It's been a day or two. Yeah, see what do I got in the tick, schedule tick, tick, here? Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> the clock's going. Now. Yeah, <laughs> calendar pages flying off in the background. So uh, seeing the big ball dropping in Times Square. So I, I think to myself, uh, eh, yeah, I'm not, eh, I'll wait till I get home. And then I think, geez, uh, I'm going to wrap up here in the man show and go straight out to love. Eh, I'll be home in about 14 hours, I thought to myself. That seems like a while. Then I thought, no, I'm not going to beat off. But it was kind of, I was flirting with it the whole day. It's like a whole heroin day. addict making a deal with himself. Yeah, make, cutting a deal with the, the oh. devil. So it's going back and forth, back and forth. Nah, don't do it. Eh, wait till you get home. Eh, do it. Oh, who cares? Back and forth, back and forth. And then uh, eh, probably about 5, 5.30, I said, yeah, it's time to pound one out. So I uh, squeezed off a quick one in the uh, bathroom of my uh, dressing room. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Sat back down, uh, started uh, reading a uh, script. And then about three minutes later, I thought, oh, I wonder if I should beat off. <laughs> and then I thought, no, wait a minute, you did beat off. <laughs> and I realized I'd been thinking about doing it so long that uh, as soon as I was done, I just got right back into, I wonder if I should do it mode. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, know what I'm saying? You've been obsessing. Yeah, I wasn't done. Yeah, done obsessing. Yeah. What were you trying to avoid today? How was, was dare it a, was you? Was it a bad day? How dare you? No, seriously. How dare you? I'm just asking. Just was it a? Str it was just like you were trying to avoid something. Well, it's, it's always a, a little stress over there. I mean, yeah. you know, we got a couple of shows to it's do. Extra and special. You haven't actually obsessed about masturbation leading into a man show yet. I wouldn't call it obsessing. I would say that preoccupied. The, the thought. Um, scampered through my mind on more than one occasion. And in, it's, it's a sexually charged environment there with uh, the juggies running around in all uh, different see. stages of undress. Okay, all right, now you're making sense. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't mention that at first. You just said yeah. you were obsessing. What, what, no, the, what did you use? What did you look at? Oh, no, Anderson, you have to get into that. Man, well, no. I know this stuff you find very disturbing. You're, you're going to feel worse if you ask those kinds oh, was of it questions. was it like a magazine? I got a mirror right over the bathroom <laughs> sink, so I was just looking at myself. Yeah, so, so, so had my makeup on, you know. So, now let me tell you, let me tell you something Carole? about uh, Ace Corolla, dry man. Oh, that's right. Smart, but no magazine. But no, no juggy. No fluff. No, <laughs> no, 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 nothing. What'd you think about? Um, uh, obsessing about masturbating. Yeah, I, I, I did. Uh, you, you know, it was, uh, it was potpourri night. It was. I was really. I was all over the map with it. I was all over the place. And I'm at the point, by the way, where I, I really don't even have to focus that much. Anderson. Oh, you were in there, Anderson. He's freaked, he's freaked out. You were in there for a, for a beat or two. So no uh, big deal. I just got done whacking off to my mom. Look, I got a dressing room. What do you want me to do? 
You, you know what I mean? To the victors go the spoils. Dude, you beat off? Yeah, I wasn't obsessing, Drew. It was just, you know, yeah. I like to I blow off a little steam before you I hit the, the stage. You have those old Keenan dressing rooms, right? They got the little dressing rooms. The, yeah. the, the, Kenan, Kenan. the ones from uh, the, 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 that we used to use in Keenan? Yeah. Uh, no, we're on the other side of the stage. Why? You think I'm I got the uh, seat pregnant? I'm trying to get the whole picture. There's, there's nothing wrong with what I did. I'm man enough to admit it. <laughs> and Anderson is freaking <laughs> out. You guys never beat off at work? You never did that? No? I'm beating off right oh, now. Damien did. Damien did? Yeah. And uh, he... he <laughs> He drove one of those uh, delivery mopeds, too, so it was a pretty tall order. Hey, look, look at his head. Look, yeah. Look at his palms. Smart. Yeah. Oh, oh. here's what I wanted to say about the uh, lube versus uh, dry. Oh, yeah. A lot of you guys are into the lube, and I don't fault you for that, but you can get caught without, and then you're screwed. You're like a diabetic who's gone camping and forgot his insulin. You become dependent on uh -huh. something. A real man... A versatile man. Like, you know, it's like I can hit from both sides of the plate. Sure, I can enjoy some lube. But in a pinch, I can go over to the right side and lay down a drag butt. See what I'm saying, Drew? I see what you're saying. Okay. In fact, I was I watched my kids play baseball, and I turned the beeper off and just sat and watched Little League. Beat off? And did not even think about what masturbating. I don't understand. I, I know. I don't understand what you, you're saying. Someday your life will reach those sorts of heights. Okay. I'm saying, why not? Well, we live in America. I've got my own space. Okay. Hey, that's that's the way I work. I'm a pro. We'll be back. Hey, hey. Nate's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's uh, Dr. Drew over there. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Ready to pounce on those phones, Drew? Let's go. All right. We'll speak to Leslie. Yes. You're 20. What's up? Okay, I'm pregnant by this married guy, and I was just wondering if he does really leave his wife, if he'll really be true to me. If he does really leave his wife? Yeah, he's been talking about it. Yeah, he's not going to do that. Well, he's getting really, really close, yeah. I think. Why? What's she, is she is she doing something outrageous? Is she... He, well, she's huge. Big gal? Yeah, I'm talking huge. How many pounds? And, How many pounds? Uh, about three fifty. Three fifty. Was did she gain and, a couple pounds since uh, he married her? Uh huh. What was he like three twenty when when he married her? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, she, she didn't know. She was she was a little bit bigger than me, and I weigh about one forty. <laughs> and he's just a little bitty thing that weighs about one forty five. He weighs about one forty five. The comedy is complete. I I always oh hold on a second I always love that. I always love to see an assless guy who's uh, under a buck fifty scaling K two to see if he can get some sex on a Saturday night. There's just something uh, amazingly comical about that to yeah, me. Yeah, it, I don't know why. No, no, oh yes, I do it, know why. It's comedy. Yeah, it's comedy. You're right, uh, Leslie. We, we you there? Yeah. Who are you yelling at? Oh, it's my daughter. Uh, and uh, are you pregnant now? Yeah. Um. Who is At the dog? Fifteen weeks. Pregnant. Where, where is the father of your first ambulatory daughter? Thing. <laughs> yeah, your first daughter. We presume this is the first daughter. Oh, um, he was a drug addict, so I got rid of him. Okay, yeah. is this guy an alcoholic or drug addict? No, no. Uh, he yeah. just cheats on his morbidly obese wife. Well, she she's a drug addict, I see. and he doesn't want that around him. All mm. right. That Leslie, let's stick to the uh, one around who for just one second. Okay. You got a daughter. Uh-huh. You made a mistake with the drug addict guy. Uh-huh. I, I did. Now you're hooked up with another guy who's a... Piece some, of work. Somewhat Piece suspect. Work. Yeah. Got you... Managed to get you pregnant while he's screwing around on his uh, wow. wife. Yeah. Now you're 20. You got one out on the floor and another one in the oven. What the hell is going on with you? Well, I think I'm in love with this guy. No, no Leslie, please. In general, in general, you're a mess. Come on. Two kids. Two, Two kids, kids, no husband, and no focus on being a mom for these kids even. What about it? What's up? Are you that screwed up? Are you that stupid? Are you high? What's going on with your life? Oh, no. I, I was messed up on drugs with the first person, but now I'm drug-free and... You know, I'm trying to get on with my life. Well, you, Why are you, you getting pregnant, though? 
I wasn't trying. This was well, a total accident. We were using protection. I was on pills. Um, yeah, I mean, my uh, birth control. Do you have asthma or something? Yeah. Man, you're, you, you're, it's active right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm nervous. All right, but what happened? You were on the birth control pill. I don't know. All right. Well, listen, you didn't take the thing correctly. That's what happened. Or you were taking antibiotic for your bronchitis, your asthma. Yeah, for my asthma. Yeah, well, you're not you're supposed to use a second barrier then. Okay. Look, right? w- whatever it is, hey, please, when I'm in charge, you will be sterilized and or put down at this point. I mean, y- y- what are you going to do? Have five kids by the time you're 24? No. With the five different guys? No. Okay. We have not yet met the man who, by the way, cheats on his wife and then leaves her. No, we that, never, we met, never that met that guy. That guy. He may be out there, and this may be him, but we haven't met him. How long have you been screwing around with this guy? For five months. And why is why is he still with his wife? Just because he cares a lot about his kids and. How many kids does he have? So how many kids? He has, he has two kids. All right. Well, I suspect he's going to hang in for those kids. And then well, maybe you ought to make some mature choices. I don't want to beat you up too much, but you know, yeah. adoption for this kid, maybe the one you're pregnant with, might be a great option. How about that? No, oh, no, no, I don't believe in any of that. Why? I mean, if I think that if I'm woman enough to spread my legs, I'm woman enough to raise it. All right. Well, then, yeah. then fine. Then you live by that and drop this a hole and start living. Uh, you're, you're focusing your life on raising these kids. <laughs> I, I I appreciate you're going to uh, punish yourself by screwing up two kids now instead of one, and I you know I think that's great. That's uh, commendable. But uh, why not just uh, punish yourself by whacking yourself with some bamboo or something and send this kid away where he can be raised properly woman well, I enough mean, I mean that, that's ridiculous you're what good. yeah you don't I said, I'm, I'm really my first child are you really you're, you're carrying on with this uh, married guy who's gotten you pregnant I, I mean can't I, I, you need Leslie I'm sorry for uh, kicking your ass around but I, it just drives me nuts when people bring these kids into the world and they're they're completely unrealistic you're a kid yourself at 20 you really are give this kid up for adoption Give this guy an ultimatum, which is he needs to, you know, he's got he's got a month to either uh, crap or get off the pot yeah, with right. you. That's right. Stop seeing him until he does makes a move with uh, 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 Senorita Porcos Gig- over there. G- Gigantor. Gigantor. All right? And start laying <laughs> down some stuff. Listen, oh, start. How weird is that? L- l- they call her Gigantor? Yes. Oh, wow. how weird is that? <laughs> Clairvoyant. And then she goes to sit down in her car. She has to lift up her belly just to. Okay. Well, listen, yeah. listen, she's listen. Let's be empathic for her too. I mean, it's pathetic that she. Yeah. That's a and you're, you're with the guy who's been uh, hanging out with Gigantor, and, and, and she at least her. has a family for the kids. So listen, screwball. You find yourself someone decent, or f- for Christ's sake, just be alone for a while and start focusing on these kids. You understand me? And yeah. If, and you get your life de- together. Go ahead and develop yourself a little bit. Get in some recovery. I'm sure your addiction abstinence is not intact. I'm sure you're still drinking and smoking pot. Work, work on yourself. Go back to school. Just get your goddamn life together if you're going to raise the effing kids. Uh, the world is your oyster. <laughs> I mean, because that's all the world is. I know I was kidding when I said that, Anderson. No, you were just, I know I you was were kidding. effed up, though. <laughs> Thomas? Come on. Yeah, hey. Tomas? What's y- up? You're 16. What's going on? Not much. Um, first <laughs> off, I'd like to say you're awesome. Thank you. And Drew, you are too. Don't get me wrong. You're you're badass. But um, also attack that joint when you get home. Bad, yeah, yeah. yeah. Badass. Um, I've been smoking weed since I started eighth grade, and I'm going to be a junior now. Mm. <laughs> and there hasn't been a day I haven't gone at without it. Right. You're and addicted. You're addicted. It gets me to sleep at night. Well, whatever. If you try to stop, you'll have withdrawal, and that's why you can't sleep. Well, see, ever since sixth grade, I've had problems with sleeping. Sure. Like, throughout middle school, I couldn't get to sleep till about 2.30. Why don't you have your sleep disturbance treated? Well, see, that's what I'm calling about. I don't why know. don't you see a doctor and have a sleep disturbance treated? Oh, no, please, leave him alone. That's what he's going to do. So, see a doctor about it? Right. Right? Most hospitals will have a sleep department, sleep studies. Okay. Go talk to them and get that treated. All right, Tomas. One more question. Yes. I went out with this girl for about eight months. Mm-hmm. And, like... We're out of time. There is nothing um, 
bad about her. Everything is so perfect about her. And yeah. I lost my virginity to her on 420. And what's the question? And she just moved to California. And I'm wondering, like, we got in a fight a couple weeks ago, and she hasn't called me since. Yeah. And I'm wondering on if I should be going yeah. after her. Going after going to California? No. 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 We got enough, we got enough Hesher from no. California. Saying, but just because she's, she's not perfect because she's with Tomas. <laughs> Something's got to be wrong there. Tomas, work on your addiction and your sleep and worry about the social life later. Love line, everybody. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Let's uh, hop back to the phones and speak to Mar- uh, Marilyn. Marilyn from Colorado. That's yeah, I thought she was from Marilyn. You're 42. What's up? I'm 42. That's right. Um, I have a friend who's 18 years old, um, due to have a baby within a month. Um she has done a couple of lines of cocaine. Um, she smoked re- weed as recently as um, Thursday and the Friday before. My concern is is what it's doing to the baby. How old is your friend? <laughs> no kidding. She's 18. Well, she's guilty of child abuse in some states, right? Okay. You understand that, that that is considered abusing a child. All right. Exposing it to chemicals that could harm it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before birth. Uh, after birth, uh, screw it. Raise well, them out in the backyard point, like that, an that onion. Point, that point, the child is making a choice. <laughs> right. It's a free country, Adam. Right. Um, and he, obviously, she's an addict because that it's you know that she wouldn't have any judgment or ability to contain these sorts of impulses in spite of its obvious harmful effects on a child. So you have somebody who's got really serious issues here. Right. And she's been she's been smoking weed ever since she was thirteen. Her yeah, family yeah, is. She's an addict. So there you go. What uh, do you? What are you doing swinging with an 18-year-old at uh, 42? <laughs> Actually, she was a friend of my daughter's. I see. And now she's a friend of yours? Well, I've been trying to, you know, been trying to help her, you know, get her life together. Are you a recovering uh, person? I'm sorry? Are you a recovering person? No. I don't, I don't uh, smoke and uh, I don't... Well, she needs to get into recovery. Nothing is going to change until she deals with the addiction. How, Nothing. How's your daughter doing? My daughter's wonderful. She lives in uh, Louisiana, has been there a year, and uh, has a boyfriend and is doing just marvelous. Got her head on her shoulders. She left home at 18? Pardon me? She's 18? My daughter's 21. I see. Okay. All right. She's yeah. hanging with someone younger, too. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's doing real good. But I'm really, you know, concerned about the baby. We've had a, we've just recently had a real big falling out. Um, I know she's, you know, she's angry with me and stuff, but... Uh, you know, she's with a supposedly quote unquote father that's twenty, who um, you know almost killed them in a, a car wreck a year ago. And uh, Mar- Marilyn, what is your plan here? You have you have a sick person. Yeah. You gonna cure? Her? No. Okay. Well, I get. Can't. You, that's right. So this business of fighting with an eighteen-year-old, I find bizarre. What are you listening to in the background, Marilyn? That's what I want to know. What am I listening to? Yeah. KBPI. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, is that a radio station? Yeah. Could you go ahead and turn that down, please? Sure, Jesus. sure I can. Um, Chris, I, you can't even turn down the goddamn competing radio station when you're on the FN air here. Sorry. <laughs> All right, baby. What do you do for a living? I I am a aide for assisted living. No. For the elderly. What about your man? You got a man? Uh, I do. He works for security. Uh oh. Um, at concerts and and whatnot. Oh boy! Um, Why don't you get get her to enlist him to be the guy that rocks for you? Oh yeah! The, uh, tell him that uh, I would like to see these security guards who work these concerts to rock out a little bit. Right. I don't like to see him standing so stationary. Well, the the bands are really giving their all, and the crowds up on their feet, and they're just standing there with their arms crossed, moving their mustaches around, a little foot tapping, a little head bobbing every once in a while. Get part of it. Come on. Right. Yeah, they, these guys bump my high when they just stand there like oak trees. Right. Okay. Pass right. that along, Marilyn. You need to Ta- uh, why don't you bring take, her to yeah. some help. Yeah. Why don't you if why don't you take her to a recovery meeting and get her connected with the recovering community and see if they can help her out a little bit. And if not, get her to professional help, more thorough professional help, and see if she's available to that. If she's not willing, then nothing you can do. And it sounds like you got some pretty serious codependency going on yourself. You, you might want. You know, to look it's up. weird. I it's weird because I don't want to beat up someone for trying to help somebody, but 
I got my questions about Maryland at 42, who's really uh, this 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 deep with a squirrely 18 year old. Yeah, the, but the whole idea of we're had a fallen out. Hey, you don't have a fallout yeah. with a pregnant, drug addicted 18. That's right. That's right. You, you got to have. You, in order to have a falling out with someone, they have to be a sort of intellectual peer. Yeah, there has to be a right. There has to be a peer relationship. Although, yeah, maybe chronologically, they may yeah. not be close, but uh, psychologically, intellectually, they may be uh, the same age. Dave, yeah, you're 34. I am. What's up? Well, I have a question here. Um, I'm attracted to young girls. Uh huh. Um, you know, 10, 12. I know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm married. I work 14 hours a day. I'm a church-going kind of guy. Well, how young are we talking about here? I said 10 or 12. Oh, my right. God. 14, yeah, uh, around there. Have I, you ever acted on that? And no. Did somebody no, I, do something to you when you were, like, 9 years old? You know, I, I, yes. What happened? Um, were you 9? Uh, I can't remember how old I was, but uh, uh, a friend of the family did did abuse me, and... All right, well, that's what happens is that sort of arrests your development and you stay focused. Your, your sort of sexual self becomes arrested at that age. And there you go. Uh, that needs to be treated, Dave, or before you do something that really harms another person. It's interesting right. that it's females, though. I, I don't know why, but it seems like whenever a guy got monkeyed with and he's attracted to young folk, it's boys. No, or is that just me? It, no, it's more often than not because it's always the men that are monkeying with the young boys. Right, and, uh, but no, boys don't do anything for me. It's just female. All right, that's well, fine. Yeah, yeah, give it, them a try. It, yeah. It's yeah. been a lot in the last, uh, say, three or four months. It really, you know, it's, it's, uh, I've yeah. been getting on the net and, and when trying to see all these pictures of kids and stuff, you know. Right. All right, it's illegal. Um, Dave, get some help. Right. Was this a guy that uh, monkeyed around with you? Yeah, he yeah. was a gay guy. He was close to the family. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll i tell you, uh, Dave, I don't know if this is going to make you feel any better, but this is why I would like guys to do that, just um, exterminate it. The reason is, is because not only does it oftentimes lead to folks like yourself, not that you're going to do this, but other folks acting on this and on, destroying on, some other lives. On multiple other lives. On multiple not, not other lives. Not like they right. got a 12-year-old girlfriend. They got... Yes. Dozens and dozens of other nine-year-olds. I'd like to treat on. guys like that when I'm in charge as a pregnant roach. <laughs> Needs to be stepped on before the uh, whole apartment building is infested. Mm -hmm. right. But but number two, it screws up poor Dave's life. Yeah. This guy gets victimized once, yeah. and, uh, you know, he could either victimize or has to walk around sort of tormented. That's right. So, God bless you for not acting on it. And I'm glad you know the difference between right and wrong and the difference between impulses and actions. And that's great. And now you got to get a little help at what got you going down this path in the first place. And that's uh, the tragedy that befell you when you were a young person yourself. Right. Uh -huh. So maybe some counseling. And, Dave, uh, I know you're a church-going guy, but this, is, this, <clears throat> this may is more take than more that. than that. Yeah, this is more than that. Okay? This may right. take a little individual therapy. Okay. All right, but uh, don't yeah. get loaded and don't act on anything. Oh, no, no, no. And the thing is, nobody ever know, knew about it. In right. My family. Right. My wife does it now. I understand. You know? And and it's, it's, it's embarrassing, you know. Right. It's, it's something I don't want to... Hey, Dave, we, we get that you see that this is not a part of you that you embrace and that you right. want to act on. But no, he's embarrassed about being victimized, too, about the what happened to him. Yeah, but... Right. That's that's I, I understand that and that's okay that you feel that way, but you need to be talking about it with someone that you can trust and sort out the feelings associated with. Now, it. what does he say to his wife, for instance? Well, I thought you said your wife does know. No, no. she doesn't. No, well, why no. does why does your wife have to know? Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Dave, it, this is a personal issue for you. Maybe you feel a little embarrassed about it. You don't want to bring this up with your wife, but you can get some counseling, and it'll stay within the walls of the counseling office. Got that. Okay. All right. All right. Unless uh, you got to shrink like mine. <laughs> Makes you talk about it on the radio? Oh, what happened? This no. Is, no, what happened? <laughs> you want to go to groups? Oh, hell no. Please. What? I swear to Christ, it's, it's, it's really something out of a movie. Yeah. It's, it's something out of a movie. Right. My shrink is in a just basic commercial office building. Yeah. And the way things... He's got one small office. I mean, if in, in sort of a corner... 
shares a little waiting room with three or four other little offices. And I, and if this was you know regular business, you'd have your secretary out there in the waiting room. You'd have your vice president, president, and your sales, and you'd have three or four little offices. Well, <clears throat> you know, these commercial buildings, it's not like there's, a, you know, wood studs and insulation in every wall. It's just metal stud they're and supposed, drywall. They're well, supposed to have soundproofing. Well, the, uh, the uh, ducting carries stuff, oh. too. And... This, there's a shrink right next to my shrink's oh, office. Oh, no. And he's got some uh, loudmouth people in there. And they come in, and sometimes they're in a good mood. It's like I can hear... Whatever it is, I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to talk about nothing and kill uh, 50 minutes like I always do. And I'm sitting there, and I'm, I, I speak, I'm speaking in hushed tones. Of course. I'm like... Uh, about your masturbation. Uh, listen, uh, I look talk around a little. I go, open the, uh, I go open the curtain. I gaze out, and then I draw the curtain, you know. And Drew, please, with the masturbation. I, I remember th- when I blew my uncle in high school. It was one of the worst days of my life. You, you think I'm uh, obsessed with this. You're obsessed about me. Yeah. I'm obsessed with the fact that Talk you, about that that you have some shrink. all sorts of compulsive How issues you don't you. even bring up with your therapist. How dare I hope you're you. talking about more but about good stuff. How, I hope you are. How dare you? Good, happy, yeah. happy thoughts. That's what we talk about. <laughs> huh. Point is, I'm sitting there on the sofa. I got the uh, cooling duct above my head, and I'm hearing some bitch wailing away in the room next to me. Now, it's sort of funny because I find myself listening and talking at the same time and sort of waiting for openings and stuff. It's a, it's a really something out of a Woody Allen movie. It's right. very bizarre. And we all know with your, the way your brain works, that sort of distraction is not good. No. The, no. He, he doesn't seem to notice that for me it's like uh, you might as well just uh, have a freight train, train slam the brakes on in the next room. It's, it's so loud and annoying to me I can't get past it. All right. You ready to roll here, Drew? Mm, I'm ready. Christina? Yes. You're 23? Yes, I am. What's up? Well, uh, a couple months ago, I went to my husband's brother's birthday party, Mm -hmm. and uh, I got a little drunk, and my husband went up to the store, and while he was up at the store, um, my husband's brother attacked me on his bed. He shoved his penis in my mouth. Perfectly normal, perfectly healthy. Help me understand how that is done. Uh, I was passed out on the bed, ah. and I just woke up oh, okay. with him on top of my face. All right, it wasn't like he, he wrestled you to the ground and then... And no, no, that. I was passed out. All right, so, uh, so you woke up, and his penis was in your mouth or on yeah. your face? Yeah. In in my mouth. And by the way, what, what, kind of, what kind of nerve is that? I mean, isn't he have some fear that she's going to startle and chomp down? That That's what... I, later in the night, as after... It happened. I was I was kind of incoherent, and my husband came in like an hour later and took me out of there. And as I was walking out, he's like, "Oh, poor thing. She doesn't remember anything about the night." And I, and that just pissed me off so bad. But I haven't told my husband, and and I'm not sure if I should. I I don't know if that would be a a right thing. To what, do. what else going on? Here? What what else goes on in this extended family? Is this just a total meltdown mess you're dealing with? It, it kind of is. Yeah. Because, what uh, else going on? We do a lot of family functions together, and when he's there, he he flirts with me, and he acts funny around me, and everybody thinks that is so funny. I mean, the whole family just thinks it's so funny. What else is with this family? They, they sound like a total mess. How old is this brother, by the way? He is 27. And how, how old is your husband? He's 22. Mm-hmm. It's interesting, because... A younger brother would probably not try this on an older brother. Right. But mm-hmm. an older brother, even though they're both adults and he's married and stuff, figures that's still my carrying, younger brother. Yeah, I kick his ass. Right. Things got out of hand. Still carrying they, on. That way. They have gotten in a fist fight in front of me before. Yeah. All right. So hey, this this is, good. Christina, all right. Let me, I don't yeah. know what your family's like, but uh, they could not be a whiter shade of trash than these goddamn hillbillies you're hanging out with. I know. I mean, these these two are a mess, and I, I wonder what kind of guy your husband is, just coming from this group. Yeah, that that that's where the road I was going down. I am. Yeah, uh, they do have a lot of problems. I yeah, mean, yeah. No kidding. No shocking. kidding, Christina. Is there? What do these guys do? Construction, welding, <laughs> roofing, uh, landscape, landscape, lawn, lawn business. They're, they're, they're marijuana addicts. 
Yeah, landscaping. Yeah, yeah, they're potheads. But landscaping yeah. is, by the way, for guys who won't be accepted into uh, welding or construction. I, I prefer <laughs> pot to speak. Yeah, that's just mule work. Yeah. yeah they, this is a horrible group of idiots. What, what's your family like? Uh, my family's pretty normal. Yeah. Uh, a lot of business owners, big businesses, uh, okay. furniture stores and things like I'm, that. I'm uh, about ready to fall off my chair, but do you have any kids? Yeah, I have two. Yeah. Two kids. Mm. All right. Can you yeah. can you keep those kids? Can you just not go over to this guy's place? Yeah, stay away from yeah. that ex extended. He lives, he lives like uh, three or four cities away, so yeah. we oh, see each other. That's yeah, easy. Stay away from that extended family and keep your husband in line. He, he sounds like he needs a lot of containing. Does yeah. this uh, idiot have kids himself? No, he's single. He lives alone. Good. Fine. All right, good. I hope he just rots. And if, if we have addiction going on here, why don't you set some, some limits with that, too? Oh, you look. Get your husband into recovery. Look, everybody who's uh, listening, who's taking issue with what we're saying. She could say this to the husband. The, and Drew, easy with the cup there, please. She could say this to the husband. The husband could go over there and get in a fist fight with the guy, probably stab him or something. Oh, knowing this, and this could be a huge, chaotic conflict that would go on forever. Uh, and, the and cops she drawn in yeah, court and his to, word right, against her. Right. She'd have to go to court. She was this. intoxicated. She drank so much she passed out. Now, yeah, this thing would go nowhere. She needs some support. She could have sort of post-traumatic stress reaction from this. Nah, she, it just she, sounds like she got loaded she, and pushed she, him she off. She should talk to her friends. I think a friend that she trusts. But more importantly, they've got a huge system of problems here. Stay away from that extended family and get the husband into some kind of recovery. L let me say this, uh, too. A uh, lot of you, first off, stop hanging out with your screwball family members and the family that you married into. You know these guys are idiots. What the hell are you going over there all the... And you know what happens? I swear to Christ, every one of these stories, and I, I don't know what it is with uh, white trash or just idiots in general, no matter what color they are. You know, each story starts with this. We were on a houseboat, or we went down to the river with my cousin and his wife, and then his whatever, and we got ourselves three cases of Paps Tall Boys, and we started drinking pretty good. And my husband got a few flares out of the trunk, and he was trying to shoot it with a shotgun while my son held on to it. And he, he, one, one of the beers exploded while he was firing the gun, and my son lost it. Look, then you start, you start peeling back the layers of the onion. It's like, well, this guy tried to rape me two summers ago during a, well, we were down at the same river. Okay, stop it. Stop it. You see the guy. Yeah, you, you see the guy? You don't have to go there. He's got the El Camino up on mm. blocks. He's uh, doing landscaping for a living. He loves watching a hee-haw and listening to Hank Williams Jr. He tried to rape you once or he tried to goose your kid uh, three summers ago. Stay the F out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Just stay out of there. Yeah, and and cool. don't go over there and start boozing it up with him. That's the other thing, too. Somehow I'm going to go over there and tilt one with this guy. Get the hell out of there. Don't let your kids hang out over there. He lives two cities away. Thank you. Scott? Yes. You're 22? Yeah. What's up? Um, I've been going with this girl for six years. Two years we've been engaged. Um, and we constantly want to go on vacation. Well, I want to take her on vacation to see my family, the family she's going to marry into and everything. Mm -hmm. And for the last seven times, she's always found ways to find an excuse why she can't go. So she doesn't want to, she she doesn't want to meet your family for some reason. She's afraid of traveling. By she by plane? A, um plane, driving, any way you want to put it. We've I've tried to take her on like little excursions, like, you know, half hour away from her house. How, do, how does she get house. to how does she get to work every day? She drives. Takes she, a horse. She's not, she, she's not afraid of that or anything. She's just afraid of not sleeping in her own bed and not being able to go home kind of thing is what you, she tells me. Do you stay with her? You do you live together? Yeah. No, we don't. We don't live together. I have my own place, and she lives at home with her family. Oh, how old is she? She's twenty-two. How is it that you've known each other since you were sixteen, and she's never met your family? She's met my family, just not my extended family. You know, like my grandparents, right? My aunts and uncles, things right. like that. What's up with her, Scott? What's going on? Well, see, I I don't know because I mean, every time this happens, she just says that she's always a, she's afraid of traveling and. That kind of thing. Her mom's had the same problem before. Her mom was on, you know, kind of drugs and everything and the whole nine yards. So I don't know if it's because she's seen that 
go on in her family that she's kind of taken that upon herself. Her mom, you know, is, she, her mom is a drug addict? No, not a drug addict. Her mom had the same problem with, with leaving her house. Yeah, so she's yeah, taken yeah. on that anxiety. She's like agoraphobic. I, I think mm. so. But what, what the problem is, is this, one, this, this one's a big one. I'm standing up in a wedding, and we knew about this a year ago. I told her if she needs to go see therapy or she needs to do anything, please do this beforehand. Well, last night when I went over to her house, she just started a new job, and her new job knows that she's going on vacation to go do this. Mm -hmm. And now she comes up with the excuse that we're real busy, we're real swamped, I can't go. All right. You well, know, look, she okay. Mm -hmm. She's got a problem. She doesn't want to go. First off, Scott, yeah, is a guy who's been with the uh, same chick since uh, the age of uh, sixteen. Yeah, you, you should be jumping up and clicking your goddamn heels together that she's not going with you out of town. I don't know where this uh, thought got, came into a guy's heads about uh, having to drag their wives and girlfriends with them on these uh, three day trips. Are you high? This is the best time you'll ever have. You go over there, you stand up at the wedding, you tilt a few, you end up at a strip club. But what about the bachelor party, too? Isn't this guy going to have a bachelor party? Yeah, he did. Oh, he already had it? Yeah, he had it last weekend. All right. You go there and get loaded and go to some strip clubs with some of these guys. You enjoy yourself. Now, as far as, as she goes, she needs to get a little medication. She needs to see a therapist. There's something going on with her. Oh, yeah. But the, well, my, my other question is, what do I do now after this? I mean, what I'm afraid is that she, if we do this and we decide to get married and everything, I'm afraid I'm going to get left at the altar kind of thing. You pansy! Okay, yeah, well, no. you, you're 22. Why don't you hold up on the marriage? Slow down. Thing? Slow down. You sound uh, minorly spazzy, Scott. I don't know what's going on with you. But you're going to have to step up with her and you're going to have to say, look, either you start getting yourself some help. Or we can't go on with Or that. this thing's not moving on. Yeah. Okay, and you got to be prepared that if she can't do it, that you're going to have to move on. See, that's why I tore her last night, you know. All right. All right. Listen, All right. forget about saying it. Now you got to start acting it. Yeah. Minorly spazzy. Mega spazzer. Mega spazzer. True, am I right about this? I know your wife's listening, but she's just nothing better than leaving town for a couple of days and uh, leaving the old lady at home. Well, people need their space. Oh, yeah. sure. sure, why not? Especially you're going to a wedding, got a bunch of your buddies over there. Well, that's that's, that's even good that's even healthier. You need to, even both men and women need to hang out with their friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's too bad women all hate each other and have no friends to hang out. No, with. No, no, they they go with great enthusiasm. And they come back hating each other. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That's it. Any girlfriend I've ever had, it's you know, I always have to contain myself. But uh, just imagine them coming back. They're, they're all they're all three. All how many there are? They're all. Like, completely separated from one another, heads hanging down, they, uh, any, dragging stuff behind Any them. girlfriend I've ever had, and they go, um, they'll go like, um, oh, bad news. Um, I didn't tell you, but, uh, yeah, me, Sharon, and uh, Paula, we, we were going to go to Vegas for a couple days. Uh, I'm, I'm always like, I was like, I want to jump out of my pants and go, this is great. I have to, it, my, my first impulse is to pick up the phone and start getting something going. Hey, we got, we got, we got, we got, oh, we got to go order a large pizza. We got, we got some poker going. We got some, uh, we got some girls over. We, we, you know, my first impulse, like, I got to start planning something. Let's not squander. <laughs> Let's not squander heels. this. <laughs> yeah, but I'm always take it slow. Oh, you guys are going. First, the first one is that kind of just acknowledgement. Oh, you guys are going. And then the second, oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, well, sure, I'll miss you, but, uh, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll keep occupied. Run down the run down the hill, grab a phone, start start planning something. But I don't know. At a certain point, don't uh, women just become your parents? No, 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 no. No, but you know what I'm no. talking. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Which is when your folks would leave. You know, your folks would go. Ah, no, me and your mother, we're going out to Catalina for three days on the twenty third. So if you and your brother can get, and you're like, oh my god, what's well, going they, on? They, what you say? So what your case you're making is that they, they become your family. They become your family. Yeah, yeah and you're like, yeah, clear out, clear out, clear. Out. Are you going to be okay on your own? Are you sure you don't want to come with? No, no, no. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's just clean the house good before they come back. Wash all that stink off. All right. We'll be back. Chris from The Living End, and you're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Don't touch that dial. Hey. Hey, everybody. Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew there. Hey, Anderson, you got that uh, CD? We don't want to hear the whole thing, do we? You don't like it that much? No, it's it's good. It's funny. Some kid made it. His name's Ryan Coyle, and uh, we've listened to it. We all laughed in here. No, all right. Sure. But, well, I mean, we're sick of hearing you, and it's just more of you, so. Well, 
<laughs> At least it's not actually us, though. That he makes a good point. It's like hearing the show in fast motion. Oh, really? Well, a kid worked hard at it, and he sent it in. And his friend did all the music. Oh, really? All right. Well, why don't we hear this? Ryan Coyle sent this in from uh, where? He doesn't know where. I don't know, Pleasanton or something? California. Like yeah. Okay, and uh, he put together a uh, little uh, musical montage, and uh, Drew and I haven't heard it, but we're too lazy to go, to go listen to it in the other studio, so let's just do it on the air. We're too lazy to keep talking here, so... <laughs> right. <laughs> Play All that right. CD. Let's yeah. hear it, Anderson. What's up? Oh, no. Crazy out there. Crazy. Are there any people who are not stoned to listen to Love Live? Not that we're aware of. No. I couldn't get any wetter. I couldn't get any colder. Why not just pee on myself? Oh, holy Christ. What have I gotten into here? Good times. Good times. Good times. Yeah. Good times. Good times. I just caught a phrase. Good times. Yeah. Good times. Nice. Good times. Good times. Adam? Good times. Hey, good times there, buddy. So we didn't help that last caller at all. Yeah, good times. Nice. You, you put that uh, redwood log in some guy's ass? Yeah. Oh. Well, the, the thing about the... Yeah. Do you have any kids? Yeah. No, oh, baby. Oh, come on. Bad times. He's not a roofer, is he? Oh, you think they're roofing? No. Oh. Bad times. If the guy's a good guy, he gets to stay in the trailer. Bad times. Well, how old was the guy? Um, he was 28. Oh. oh. Goddamn airplane turbulence. Mother Eckers, you bring up the goddamn thing that causes more injuries than the thing you're going to... Why then, example? Dude. Why? Real good time. Yeah, good time. Yeah. Starting to look a little less rosy, right? Lay that BS down. Mm -hmm. That cheap uh, half two bastard Drew. What the hell? Okay, just shut up. Adam, they dented can of garbanzo beans. Didn't get the gold package on the Cadillac. Why? That uh, goddamn Oprah. Uh, Do not worry. She will pay. Good times. The only time I really know I'm alive is when I'm napping. You're gay. Good times. I got into her vagina. Oh, yeah, but you got off it into penis film. How dare you? Uh, once in a while, I'll uh, be whacking off just in the middle of the day, you know, four in the afternoon or something. Interesting. Oh, shut up. Would you, Drew? I'm trying to do some halfway decent radio for a change. I, man, when you talk like that, man, I, I don't even know you. What kind of son of tard are you? So you don't love me? You talking to me, Drew? I love you, yeah. Oh, I love you, man. <laughs> Born gay, the life is to live gay. And they say kudos to Drew. I've seen a lot of schwans. Good time. Oh, yes. I'm about ready to sprout a vagina. It's awesome. Maybe it's love. He's a passionate, passionate man. No, 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 no. Good times. Oh, no. What's the question? Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Good time. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I'm, that I'm, was I'm, good. I'm, yeah. I, I was practically brought, brought to tears thinking to myself, Yeah. Well, this is the way we're heard. Yeah, yeah. This is what they hear. And then I thought to myself, how could they? And then I thought, well, what did we talk about tonight? Well, Adam masturbate at the man show. Mm -hmm. uh, some guy being, being gay because he wouldn't uh, make out with his girlfriend. Check. Um, you abused me on at least three occasions about random, random. You abused my wife. Look, here, here's the thing, Drew. <sighs> when people think of this show in y years from now, when we're long gone... Yeah. And they, they just close their eyes, and someone says, well, love line, what was that? That's basically what they'll hear. Good times. Born gay. What we just the heard. life is to live yeah. gay. Yeah. That, that, that's what it'll be. Doesn't that bring... No. No. Oh, no, at least oh. they'll think of something. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> they forgot that. <laughs> did not. No talent ass clown. <laughs> Drew loves a good fart. He loves a good novelty fart. All right, Albert. Hey. Hey, you're 19. Yep. What's going on? Um, I'm uncircumcised. and uh, You're uncircumcised? Yeah. And it's uh -huh. not sensitive. I have um, very sensitive. Uh -huh. I want to know what I can do about that. Now, by sensitive, you mean we're having sex. The gun goes off too fast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not about being uncircumcised. 
Well, oh, no. no, really is not. Well, I, it really is not. How dare it is not. Let's you? Be serious how here. dare you? He could. Is the end of your is the head of your penis very sensitive? Yeah, it's like. Do you, if you put a condom like on? This, this. Hey, whoa! If you put a condom on, does it suddenly uh, last as long as you wish? No, no, of course not. Uh, That's not the way how that works, Adam. I, I, I'm saying it could be taking a bad situation and making it worse. Well, so put a condom on. Well, that takes care of that. I'll, I'll tell you, do you want to toughen up the head of your penis a little bit? Yeah. Get it used to contact? I'll tell oh. you what to do. The I'll sled? Ta- I'll tell you what to do. Yeah. Some blocking sled? <laughs> no. No, Albert, uh-huh. when you're walking around, going about your normal day, do you, do you work? Yep. Where do you work? Uh, foot Action at Eastland. It's a shoe store. You work at a shoe store. Yep. When you're in the back, next time some guy uh, sends you to the back to get some... Uh, PF Flyers, they still make those. Tri- <laughs> <laughs> they don't make those anyway. Okay. Send you back to get some, uh, Air Jordans. Send you back to get some Air Jordans. Some reach down in your pants and pull your foreskin back and let the head of your penis just hang out. That's what I was saying. And um, then and then walk around throughout your day and let it bang up this against the side of your pants and stuff and toughen it up a little bit. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was saying about. That's why I was thinking it was the circum. The well, uh, Albert, uh, that's not going to do crap for you. No, it it might help psychologically and it might help physiologically a uh, little bit. But you? Albert, we talk to guys who have this problem all night long and uh, and they're circumcised. Right. So this is about. Your gun just going off a little too fast. It's not so much about you being uncircumcised, but I think that doing what I just said is worth a try anyway. What, uh, how about the unloading the pistol? Do you can you take a bullet out of the chamber, so to speak, before you get with your woman? I mean, can you? Sometimes I can. Yeah, you Sometimes take care of yourself, like I took yeah. care of myself <laughs> earlier. Today. You need a maintenance program. Yeah. And, yeah. and how long have you been with this woman? Oh, it's different girls, man. Different girls. Different girls. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be hard, truthfully, With to find girls, your yeah. rhythm if you yeah. keep moving around. Yeah. Wear that condom. I agree with Drew. Try pulling the foreskin back when you're walking around normal days. You can toughen it up a little bit. And uh, see if you can figure it out to remove the bullet from the chamber before uh, the gun goes off in the bedroom. I'm just thinking, this show needs like a disclaimer at the beginning. It Which needs is. to be like, uh, for all of you. Uh, see a doctor. Wear a condom. Don't do drugs. There don't you go. drive fast. I mean, you know what I mean? Cover ninety percent of uh, because I, I could see how show. well, but I could also see how we could be criticized for not chanting that stuff and not enough. And yet we don't do it because it's so boring. No, more than boring, just like not real. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. I don't know All what right. that was. We'll edit that out of the show. Sorry for the people who heard it. <laughs> Jeff, you're twenty seven. Yeah. What's up? Uh, I'm having kind of a problem. I was wanting to ask Dr. Drew if there's anything uh, physically to do with a woman when they're pregnant. If they're more prone to get in fights or anything. Yeah, they're un- we're, we're listen. Getting in fights. We're getting in fights to the tune of four to five times a week. To the tune of. <laughs> yes. Jeff, were you listening the other night when I said I want to see that worked in more? I've listened to you guys for years. Thank you. Thank you. To, for, to the tune of what? Five, six years? <laughs> Oh yeah, to the tune of five or six. Yeah, right. Um, if if you were estimating how far into the pregnancy she is, would you say it's the tune of six, seven months? No, not that far. Not that far. How far? We, are, we already have one. This is our second. Um, and did, was she this way during the first one? You know, it's tough to. I guess. Uh, but not so bad. <laughs> not so bad. Um, well, first of all, you know this is when you are expected to really be coming through with your best behavior, right? <laughs> okay. Well, this, the, women feel very vulnerable when they're pregnant, and this is the time for you to make them feel secure and safe and loved and protected. That, that's your job. Okay. Not to give her grief, not to give her ass, not to be going out by yourself because she can't. That is the last thing you want to be doing. Right. She's only she's about three months right now. Well, yeah, be that as it may, the, the, be a long yeah. six months. And the other thing is they, that the, the biological changes are rather profound, and there can be depression. And irritability is one of the hallmarks of depression. And people who are depressed need you. They need that connectedness. They need their intimate relationships, even though it seems that they're pushing pushing you away. They need you, and it, it's it's an important idea to have that evaluated. Maybe you know Marie Osmond just put a book out about pregnancy and depression. You might want to maybe get her that book and let her look at it, see if she fits. That oh, profile. Uh, you know, and I saw that at a uh, B Dalton's. It's called. Um... <laughs> 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 
no talent ass clown. <laughs> you know, it's funnier. I, Drew, I do this show like I'm trying to get fired. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, if this was a sitcom, you'd be going, well, he wants to get fired and collect on the next like, few that, months of his contract. Just, let's set the thing. It's, it's WKRP. It's 1977. Right. And the DJ's trying to get fired. Yeah. That's like a sitcom. Mm. Ah, Jesus Christ. Yeah, listen, you got to step up when your wife's pregnant. Yes, she, you do. Look, she. You know, they always talk about all the uh, pain, the physical pain, the emotional pain that a woman goes through to carry the child. What about the pain she brings on her man who's uh, living under the same roof with her? This monster for nine months. That's pain. Oh. <laughs> True. I was just thinking about your triplets and mm. your wife. And She, was, a, she was like... Uh -huh. No, no. Uh -huh. Hey. Uh -huh. She was a seriously... Uh, she She's troubled when she's not no, pregnant. No, listen. As she was the most untroubled uh -huh. pregnant woman. And she was... What'd a, you do? Just... Uh, she was a living incubator. I mean, she was in bed for four months. She was in the hospital <laughs> half of that time. He just had her juiced up the whole no, time. No, she wasn't juiced smart, up. Smart, Couldn't smart, be. Smart. She should have been. I would have had to have been. That's right. Train she like you, Listen, down no, seriously. You and I would have been... Please, imagine that. No. Being an incubator for four, for nine months and four of those just, just completely no. being relinquished. To sort of a, a medical system. But she was system. down. I, I'm saying if she had one, she was on her feet, you'd be you'd be screwed. She'd have enough energy to kick your ass around the house. <laughs> you dodge a bullet there. Smart. Smart. Um, what about taking drugs when you're pregnant? What about them? Well, what oh, about antidepressants? Taking? You can't really. Can't. No, really. Nothing can be... You, can't. you shouldn't. You can, but you shouldn't. Okay. Not, so this, the jury is out on that. It's still it's, out. It's not been studied properly. I don't know. Okay, it's interesting. You they know, they would go off or anything. It, there's a couple it. of them that may be safe, but uh, generally yeah. they try to keep them off the serotonin reuptake inhibitors during pregnancy. I mean, really diligently keep them off it. Okay, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll uh, speak to uh, Angie, who's a uh, 31 year old boyfriend's in prison for drugs. Really? And, uh, oh, yeah. No? Yeah. Uh, how about this one? No. Uh, no. No. Line. Let's keep rolling right along with the calls and the hilarity. What do you say, Drew? Sure. Angie? Good times. Good times. Hello. You're 24? Yes. Boyfriend's in prison? No, he was in prison when I first started dating him. Uh, Ooh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, we've been dating for five years, and he had just gotten out of prison. He was in prison for four years. Last night I looked on the internet and found out that he was in prison for molesting a child. Yeah, all right, well, let's get back to my first question. Yeah, what's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? What do you mean? Well, you say you met the guy when he was in prison? No, 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 he, he was a right... That, no, that's what you said. He had, no, he had just gotten out of prison. When he, I he, that's, that's the second thing you said, <laughs> but the first thing you said is he, he was in prison when you met him. No, well, he was in prison for four years, and when he got out, I met him, and we've been dating for five years. How'd you meet him? At a bar. Okay. And so he was, his, his crime was over nine years ago. Yeah. Well, actually, when I looked on the internet, it said his crime was 13 years ago. That'd be over nine years ago. Yeah. Okay. Right, and... Uh, <laughs> I just, I don't know if I should, I want to talk to him about this, and I, I want to know if I can do more checking into what actually happened, and I was also curious to know if people can really change with health. I, I don't well, know what to good do. Question, actually, you, good question, actually. Uh, you, now, he told you he was in for drugs. Yes. And could he have been in for drugs and this oh yeah yeah that's very i knew he he did drugs when he was younger all right and how do you find out what he did on the internet well some friend last night was telling me about her son is in prison and she looked at this one website and you can put in their name yeah and wow their state, and it tells you all their information interesting that's great wow. her son's in prison. that's yeah. nice yeah it's a lovely group and uh how does he seem to you he he seems like a completely different person that would do something like that. Mm -hmm. What kind and of person? What, what was yeah. the situation? What did they say he did? I, you know, it, they didn't give details, and that's mm -hmm. what I, I... Someone told me I could go down to the courthouse and get public records. And well, well, look, you're involved with this guy. Give him a chance to be honest with you. Okay. So well, then what by happens, bringing it up. Yeah, what happened, I... I you know, I found out this is what happened, and if he's uh -huh. super defensive and angry, then, hey, this this isn't the guy you think he is. Do you have kids? No. Mm. You a um, heavy set gal? Me? Yeah. 
Um, I've recently gained some weight since I've been with him. <laughs> well, that's all right, but I'm just I mean, I, we we have broken up before, and I've been fine without him. I just, mm. I care about him. It, it's all a right. long time to invest in a and, relationship. And he's uh, doing his work and, you know, yeah. keeping, yeah. keeping, keeping clean. Well, he drinks, but... Uh-oh. Yeah. It's not a great thing for a guy who had a problem with drugs. Right. No, I I think that, you know, I'm thinking now that he, I'm sure he's drinking to cover up his pain. Oh, pl- Angie, Angie. Yes. Please. Yeah, yeah, boy. You, you have no kids. No. That's good. And what's this guy do for a living? Construction. No. <laughs> Horrible. Well, yeah. he's drinking because he's an alcoholic. I told you most of the guys I work with were felons. Oh, no. You would have been wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. He's drinking because he drinks. Uh-huh. He likes drinking. Yeah. And, yes, there are there are emotional issues that fuel alcoholism and make it progress. But you got a problem here. Yeah. you got some real serious issues with this guy. Okay. Criminal, child abuse, addict, drinking. So eh. what should you do? Talk to him. Talk to him. Ask for some change. Uh, don't make go, a big deal out of it. Go to Al Anon. She, a friend of hers, was you know in jail. She said to go on this website. She did, and that's what happened. Yeah, she, you know, be yeah, honest. You're gonna with stay him. with this guy. Be, should feel free to be honest with him about that. Rachel, yeah, <clears throat> you're 20. What's up? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Ooh, um, I was just calling to let you know that I think it's really funny when you fart on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think farting is uh, hysterical, but I have realized <laughs> that in my adult travels that uh, other folks don't. It, all it's pretty time. sexy, isn't it, Rachel? <laughs> um, Turns you on? No. I mean, I just think Be it's really funny. And Be you can really laugh at yourself, and then Drew just sits there. <laughs> Drew likes a good fart, too. Oh, that's good. I, I like Adam's diabolical laughter. It ensues. <laughs> yeah, she's a hand one, too. I don't know. <laughs> she said, uh, <laughs> we'll see if I can get one off before the show ends. So, right, right, Rachel? All right, that's y- cool. You be listening? Yeah. yeah. Do you? Just let's, uh, We never really interviewed a girl that enjoys the fart humor, right? You enjoy the fart yourself? Um. Well, my roommate and I think it's really funny to sit around and <laughs> yeah. have farting contests. Shoot yeah. the breeze. Yeah, that's nice. You know what I was saying? You know, when we... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, hey, I was... Uh, you know, I was at the man show, shooting man shows today, yeah. and you know, walking around in my sweatpants uh, during some run-through of some uh, manovations bit or something. It's the same thing. We're in the man show studio. It's a good-sized studio. Uh, in the audience, where all the seating is, where the bleachers are, there's a handful of our writers, a couple of tech guys, people sitting around reading the newspaper, and then us up on stage arguing over some nonsense detail, and uh, a few of the few of the familiar faces from uh, the old Love Line show around there. Wow. Tracy and uh, Craig oh, Frank yeah, sure. and stuff. Anyway, I had a... I, they put the little lavalier, lavalier mic on you and you right. walk around. I had a good one. So when I have a good one, I'll pop the mic off. <clears throat> little mic that, you know, is clipped onto my shirt. Yeah. Put it in my ass and let it go. Oh. And it fills up the whole PA system, you know. <laughs> it, it, it goes around... <laughs> It echoes throughout, but everyone looks up, you know, because it's big. It's like we're just sitting there talking about nothing, you know, and suddenly. <laughs> so. No talent, ass clown. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It's huge. Everyone started laughing. But you and Jimmy just sitting. And me and Jimmy about. laughing like madmen, and every, all the writers laughing. Everyone's laughing. And 10 minutes later, I let another one fly. But I put this little lavalier mic, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the size of a your raisin. Finger, your fingernail, I, yeah. I probably like shove it up my ass, like. <laughs> You know, it takes over a little place. And we're sitting around at lunch, and some people comment and said, Yeah, that's funny. That's good. And I said, Yeah, but I, I want to be alive long enough <laughs> for the day when not only the sound is transmitted through the speaker, but the smell comes and through. The we, and we can, even, we can even rate the smell. <laughs> How many hobo power? You can turn the volume, no, the hobo power volume. Don't ruin right? my utopia with your uh, delusions of hobo power. No, you can I'm just saying, dial I in just the hobo power. Want, what, what an amazing thing that when the smell could come through the speaker as well. That's all I'm looking no, for. Don't take another call. Oh, yeah. No. Brian? Yeah? <clears throat> You're uh, 21. What's up? Yeah, I got a question about, um, well, first I should start off where it all began here. I have a small penis size and uh-huh. it's about four and a half. Mm-hmm. Erect. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was about 15 years old, I had this girlfriend, and she was going down in my pants and whatnot. Mason jar. Yeah. Yeah? yeah I don't believe this. And? 
And she reached down there and she pulled back up and she gave him this smirk and I, right. I didn't know anything about it back then. So I was like, what's going on? I followed her back to the classroom. I said, she said she's going to break up with me. So what's going on? She Where is he going with this? Who knows? Back to the classroom. Mason jar. Oh, listen. Four and a half. That's what you got. <clears throat> that's what you got. <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. Just uh, get good with your tongue. Not only going down on women, but I mean talking them into the sack when you're in a bar. There you go. You're fine. There's nothing you can do. Why bother? Listen, don't take that call. Remember? Overcompensate. You never listen to me. Oh, shut up. We'll be back. There you go. Fabulous love line. Fabulous. All right. Let's take a little extended uh, dance break here, Drew. Come mm. back in about uh, 22 hours. What do you say? Good. Let's do it. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying... Mahalo. Adam, were you sexually aggressed going up? <laughs> yes. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.